Hi, welcome to Kitty Witty Papercraft if you're new here. I'm Amy and in this video I am going to be sharing a flip through of this finished junk planner that is all set up and ready to go. So I have several videos that go with this planner and I will link them up in the description box below. So I have a tutorial that shows how I made this and then there's a few videos that show some different uh, little projects I did like decorative projects I did in this planner. So I wanted to make my own planner because store-bought planners never exactly have met my particular planning needs. So either, um, you know, they had things in there that I didn't want to track or maybe didn't have things that I did want to track or maybe the size wasn't quite right or the layout or something. So I never really was super happy with any store-bought planners. And I also figured if I can make my own journals, I can make my own planner, and you can too. So if you've made journals before, you can definitely make your own planner. If you've never made a journal or a planner before, you can do that too. This is really pretty simple, especially because this is just a ring-bound journal. So it's just a book cover that you take the front and back covers off, you hole punch them, and add papers to them. So it's really as simple as that. And the nice thing about this being homemade or handmade is you can make it as simple as you want or as complicated as you want. So if you've never made one before, you can just keep it really simple with the book cover and your planner pages inside. And that's a great starting point. And the nice thing also about it being ring bound is as you get a little more comfortable making things, you can just add to your journal as you go along. So you'll get some ideas of the kinds of things you can add to a planner when I do the flip through. But um, for the planning part, so the thing that's a little bit different, obviously, than a journal with this being a planner is you need some planner pages. So you have two options there. You can make your own planner pages. It's really simple. That's exactly what I did. And I have very simple planning needs. So at this particular like stage in my life, I did not want to have a lot of stuff on my planner pages. I just really need the basics. And I knew I could just make my own really simply. I did it on Microsoft Word using tables. And I just made some monthly calendars. I made a, a weekly page and some daily pages. So depending on how you like to plan, like some people only like to do weekly layouts. So you might just have that in there. I like to do daily planning so I can have a place to put my to-do lists and any like appointments or things that I might have that day. So you just have to find what works for you. And like I said, you can either make your own pages or you can go to Etsy and look up printable planning pages. And there are thousands of options on there. And there's some really, really neat ones on there. They're really detailed. Some of them have, you know, decorative elements on the pages like flowers or different things. So you can find some really beautiful ones. You can find plain ones. You can just really whatever you would want in a planner you can find on Etsy and just print out your own pages. And then if you want it to look kind of like a junk journal, which is how I made this one, then you can just add those elements in with your planner pages. So I'm going to do this flip through and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. So this one, um, the way I like to plan is I just have a divider for every month. Now, some people may want to have some other sections in their planner besides like a monthly section. So that's going to make your planner even bigger. This planner only has um, a month monthly sections, so a section for each month. And <laughs> you can see how chunky this is. This got way bigger than I even thought it would. So I'm going to share a couple tips about that. That's me squeezing it shut. If I let it go, it, it opens up pretty wide. And part of the reason why this is so chunky right now is because, well, one, I have a chenille pocket inside and then um, you can kind of see that right here and then the front and back covers have quilted pockets quilted material as pockets so that chunked it up and then every divider has pages in between uh, vintage book pages and then I also added some embellishments throughout so oh and the other reason why it's really chunky is in some of the pockets I added clear stamps so just things that I thought I might use 
in planning I put in the pockets but now that this is so chunky I may actually pull out the stamps and I even have some little word sticker booklets in here I might pull those out and put them in like a cute zippered pouch and just keep that with my planner so it's not so big but it's not a big deal this is just going to sit on a table just like this so it doesn't matter to me that it really <laughs> doesn't shut very far and uh, it's really chunky so it's kind of fun and I don't mind that so I want to share a couple tips in the video that I did showing how I made this, I started with one inch binder rings. So let me grab one of those. So a one inch binder ring is pretty small. And very quickly I realized this was not gonna be big enough. So, and that's just with, you know, I said like the, just having monthly sections. So if you wanna have more sections in there, like a section for budget, a section for tracking, goals, like all the different possibilities that you could have in a planner, depending on your needs, will determine like how big of a binder ring that you want to use. So I've switched my binder rings out to one and a quarter inch binder rings. So you can go one and a half, two inches, two inches is pretty big. Let me grab my bag of um, rings. And I can show you. So if you've never made a ring bound journal before, you might want to start buying by buying a set of rings that has different sizes in it. So I just got these on Amazon and I will put a link to that in the description box also. I don't know if it'll be there today, but I will get that up. Make sure I have all the links in there, um, you know, in the next day or so. But I bought this pack and it has everywhere from two inches, which is really big, to, let's see, these are... I think these are the one and a half inch rings. And then I've got one and a quarter inch rings, which is what I used. Yep, this is the one and a quarter inch ring. Not that it really kind of tells you what you can fit, but just by looking at them here, but just so you can see the different sizes. This pack came in four sizes, one inch, one and a quarter, one and a half, and two inches. So I'm using the one and a quarter. I probably could have done the one and a half. It doesn't seem to be a whole lot of difference between those two, but just something to keep in mind. If you're not sure, if you've never done this before, you're not sure how big your journal is going to end up being, you might want to buy a multi-pack of rings. The other tip I wanna share that I didn't realize this when I made the journal, so this is not gonna be said in that video if you watch that tutorial, is I probably did mention it. I wasn't too sure about when I made the holes in the cover, I made them really close to the cut edge. And if I did this again, I would make the holes a little bit further in. So, um, you know, there's a lot of pulling happening because this is so chunky. So the eyelets have kind of popped out, especially on the back. So here's the back cover and you can see here, hopefully that is showing up, yeah, how the eyelets have already popped out. So just on these two, um, just from the pressure. So it's not going anywhere, but that's just something to keep in mind. And if you're going to make one, make sure you don't put your holes too close to the edge. So yeah, so I guess I'll just get ready to start the flip through. Um, but before we go inside, the last thing, just for decorative um, purposes, I just added some fun things to the ring here. So I just tied on some strips of fabric here in a bow. I have a yarn bow here. Here's another strip of fabric, this pink gingham. And then I attached a tag flip onto the ring. I was gonna pop this off to show you really quickly. But this is just a tag flip I made one time and I thought it made a cute tassel just hanging on the edge of my journal here. And then if you want to, you can even take pieces off your tag ring and use them in your planner. So I may actually do that if I wanna do any more decorating, but right now I feel like it's pretty decorated. I've spent a good amount of time on this in the last week. And uh, yeah, let me just share what this looks like inside. So, I haven't started using this yet. I'm going to start using this for September. So I'm getting ready to set up my September um, month. And I'll share some pages probably on my Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, I'm at Kitty Witty Papercraft there. And I will occasionally just show some of the inside pages of this as I use it. There's something else I wanted to mention. Oh, right. So another reason why this is so chunky 
is I put the planner pages for each month in here already. So what you could do is just wait until you get to a particular month, if that's the way you were planning, and wait and put the pages for that month in there when you're ready to use them. So what I did is I have a monthly calendar for each month and a monthly menu calendar. And then I have, oh, this one doesn't have it. So let me see. Before the daily pages start, now I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, let's see. Let me pop over to September because that's the month I'm getting ready to use. So for every month, this is what I have. And there's a lot of pages. Let me show you just before I even start. This is an entire month's worth of sheets. So you can imagine if you have all of this in every single month to start with, it just gets chunky really fast. The other months that I'm not using right now just have the monthly calendar and the monthly menu and one week's worth of daily pages and one week page. So this one has the entire month though. So yeah, you might just want to think about either not adding all the pages for the month or not adding any until you're ready for it. So this is all my planner is really basic. So I have a blank monthly calendar, blank monthly menu because I plan my dinners a month in advance at the beginning of the month. And then at the start of each week, I just have this really basic plain page that I can just write down what I need to do for home, work, any appointments, and then what our dinners that week are going to be. And that suits me. That's all I need. So that's all I'm including. And I like not having things that I'm not going to use. So when I was using store-bought planners, there was always little things on the page that I wasn't going to use. And I didn't like having those blank spots there. And then there's also kind of like a pressure to do the things that are on the page, you know, like if it's track your water intake or different things, like I don't need any reminders of the things I'm not doing <laughs> um, if I'm not planning to track them. So that's just a, a personal decision you have to make. So then my daily pages, I did print them front back, but they still take up a lot of room. So this is enough daily pages for a full month. And all I want, again, really simple on my daily pages, I have a schedule on the left side so if I need to put any appointments on here that's where they go and then on this side it's my to-do list work and home and then there's an extra space in late in case I need to write anything special down for that day so all right let's start with the flip through so in my front pocket here um, it's just some vintage quilt fabric and I've got some planner stamps but like I said I think I want to take those out so as I go through I'm going to pull all those out and I have a video showing how I made this little shaker thing. I want to be able to reuse the dividers in this planner. So I wanted to have the date in here, but I didn't want to put it on the first divider. So I made a little uh, shaker with the year on it. So at the end of the year, I can just pull out all of my 2020 pages and then pop in a new marker for 2021. So in between all of the dividers, I either have a mix of vintage pages so it kind of gives it a junk journal feel or I don't have vintage book pages and I just decorated the divider so I just kind of mixed it up as I went through so you can just kind of do however you like when you have thinner pages you might want to use reinforcers so I had pages tear as I was working in this here and there if they were thin pages like these this vintage ledger paper so I just went back and added some little reinforcers with my reinforcer punch. I love this thing. This is a We Are Memories Keeper uh, punch. So you can just punch out coordinating paper and glue that on there. So that definitely helps for something like this that's gonna get used a lot. That really helps. So this is just a little tuck spot. And I just added some things in the planner, just thinking to be practical. Some things are just decorative for fun, but some things are practical too. So like I added some vintage ledger paper here and there. So if I want to do like a brain dump or a lot of writing, I have some paper through here that I can do that. And then I have a couple pages from the book that, uh, the pages that went inside the book that I used for my cover. And I just made this into a pocket. This, the pages of this book are really tall. They're 13 inches. So I just turned this one on the side and folded 
the edge in and just made that a little pocket there. And here I just have a decorated divider. So I sort of tried to stick with a general theme just so I could make it easier on myself when I decided what to do for decorating each of the dividers or the ephemera and the decorating and all of that just to kind of I always try to limit myself so I don't get overwhelmed with like wow where do I start what do I put on these pages so in this planner I'm using mostly um, these vintage sewing pattern illustration ladies butterflies and flowers so that is pretty much like my theme for this I didn't put a lot of vintage children images like books from like readers or pages from readers or a lot of the little kitschy animals that I love because I'm thinking I'm going to use those two elements in another <laughs> journal that I'm planning to make another ring bound journal that I'm going to be tracking all of my creative ideas so they're going to be sort of in that journal so this one has a lot of butterflies in it and these vintage ladies and I also all these little book page um, punches that I have on the butterflies that you'll see throughout here. They're from a Pride and Prejudice book. It's one of my favorite novels. And so I have a video where I talk about that. And um, yeah, so I use that throughout the book for throughout my planner. And I have some quotes from that story throughout the planner also. So that's like another little theme. And this is just a couple of lines from the story that I added to this um, divider here. And then this, I just added some fun things just for color and a little tuck spot here. And the sewing pattern envelope is a great place just to put some die cuts and some ephemera that would be good for writing on. It's a crepe paper ruffle I just added and it's just like a little band here to put some papers under the ledger paper I could write on. The cookbook page is just there for color. And a lot of these still have a lot of blank areas on them so if I want to add something there I could I don't know, do some kind of lists or something and attach it or kind of temporarily attach it, maybe with like with washi tape. Cause like I said, I want to reuse these dividers again down the road. So I won't attach anything permanent if it's going to be, you know, something specific like a list or brain dump or something like that. This is a fun little pocket. This is a label from BB bats. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that candy. It's like taffy on a stick. And I have a pack of these, um, the labels that they use to wrap the taffy. And they're just in big sheets. And I folded it in half and just kind of sealed in the bottom and the side to make it a pocket. And then just popped some ephemera in there. And behind that is a vintage dictionary and this is just a little tag made from a snap card just added some ribbons to that and over here my little ribbons are getting stuck inside I had a lot of fun just playing with this and decorating and it's a nice thing when you're just making something for yourself you can just kind of play with ideas try out different things and uh if you're used to selling things, you kind of um, you have a different perspective when you're making a project than you do when you are making something for yourself. So I feel like I have a lot more kind of freedom to experiment and try different things when I'm making something for myself. So I'm really glad I did take the time to make this for myself because it allowed me to try out some things that I might not want to try out in something that I'm making to sell because I'm not sure how it's going to go and I don't want to ruin it. So um, just having that total freedom is is really kind of refreshing and and fun so what I did here is just put this little clear pocket that is tall enough to hold a tag and I just put a decorated tag in there and all the little ladies that I use throughout here um, throughout my planner are from a sewing pattern catalog that I have that I just cut out I wanted to mention that and then I just filled it with some sequins and these are pockets that came from Tim Holtz 
ideology line and he used to sell little mini binders i don't know if they still make those i think i've had these for years and they're hole punch to fit that mini binder I'm not sure if you can see that yeah and so i just laid the pocket on the page and hole punched my divider and then just tied these ribbons on just for fun you can see it through both sides and it's just got the the ribbon there so just something for fun so you know this is a pl practical thing but I also wanted just to add some fun elements to it too and I feel really motivated to use this planner because you know it's fun and it, it just feels like me and that's the other nice thing about making your own planner especially if you love vintage and if you're here you probably do you love junk journals you love ephemera and you just can't get that in a store-bought planner so making your own is very motivating so and I really need to get my stuff together <laughs> um, and not just use scraps of paper to write my to-do lists on every day and I really wanted to get back into doing that in a little more organized way so I'm excited to use this planner for that reason so this is another layout that I did a video on talking a little bit about like decorating and how I did this so I won't go into all the details as I'm going through I really just wanted to make this a flip through I know I'm doing a lot of talking also but this is just a card that I made that end into a pocket. Didn't even decorate that divider. So some of them are decorated, some of them are not. And I just kind of use the colors in the divider to help me decide the colors that I want to use in the vintage pages. And I also varied like how I put the planner pages inside. So that's something else that you can think about. So like this month here, this is for April and you can either put your April pages like these planner pages first and then put some ephemera pages behind it. Or you can do like this where I kind of sandwiched the planner pages in between some uh, vintage ephemera and book pages. So I've got these in the front then the planner pages and then behind that I've got a few more pieces of ephemera and book pages and then the divider so I just kind of mixed it up as I went through this layout was also something I did a video on talking about how I decide like what to add to my planners and journals page wise like when I want to add all these like junk journal vintage book pages and ephemera how I do that see pockets packets make great pockets some more ephemera that I can just kind of grab and use if I want to do any more decorating. This is just some fun trim from one of the Maggie Holmes collections and this is a handmade embellishment and these are fun to make up in advance. Like I have a little dish that has all different color combinations and things and then you can just pop them in a journal or planner in this case and just add a little decorative item I could take this out and add it to one of my journal pages I'll probably do a little bit of decorating on my planner pages just with like washi tape and stickers that kind of thing so we'll kind of see how that goes this is just a page from my pride and prejudice book and then underneath I just did another I had another one of those Tim Holtz pockets and this one it was like a double pocket so I just added some vintage buttons and sequins and then just some little die cuts in that pocket there and that just flips up also. This is a vintage 45 record sleeve. I love using these for pockets. So this just has some more clear stamps. I'm going to take those out and put them to the side and then some ephemera that is really making this journal thick and kind of heavy. Oh my little reinforcer needs to get glued back down right there. This is another one where I was just kind of experimenting a little bit with um, some ideas. So these little clouds, you can see they're shiny. It's actually just aluminum foil. <laughs> so I needed to uh, sharpen one of my punches. And I'm sure you've heard that you can sharpen punches by punching aluminum foil. And I had never actually tried it. It kind of seems like it wouldn't actually do anything, but it did seem to help. So I was initially just going to punch out some clouds with uh, scrapbook paper. But 
um, I sharpened it with the foil and then I had these like little foil punches that were cloud shaped and I just kind of wanted to incorporate them on this page and then I also punched out some cloud shapes with doily paper so I just kind of layered them just for decoration and then here you can see on the edge of the page this paper here and on the other side that is just some sewing pattern tissue that I turned into a pocket. So what I did was uh, folded sewing pattern tissue in half because it's very thin obviously so it's just kind of like a double thickness and I took it over to my sewing machine and I sewed it the pocket together first. I didn't sew it on the divider. I just sewed it together so I had a pocket and then I just used pinking shears to trim the edge there and then I just used double-sided tape to attach the pocket to the divider here and then you can see a little bit of the the edge of the pinking sheared edge of the tissue there around the back side of the divider all kinds of things you can do with sewing pattern tissue so you get some vintage sewing pattern um, you know envelopes and tissue I'll try to do a video at some point, but there's like all different kinds of crafty things you can do with the tissue and then of course with the envelopes. So they're really versatile and kind of fun. Um, I did a little video showing, I think that was just on my Instagram IGTV. I just made this little bookmark from a tall flashcard. And the other thing about making your own planner, if you, of course you can make it whatever size you want. So you could use a smaller book, but the nice thing about making a planner in a big book like this is I could use some of my bigger pieces of ephemera. So this big flash card was something I could use in this where I couldn't maybe use that as easily in a smaller journal or something. So that's kind of fun. And what else did I want to say with that? Um, <laughs> oh, right. So the the reason why, and I mentioned this, I think, in the other video. I forget now. The video was like a week or so ago when I made the tutorial on this. So I forgive me if I mentioned this already, but this book is 13 inches tall, so it's really big. But I wanted to at least be able to use 8.5 by 11 paper because I like to have a lot of space to write. I cannot do planning in like a traveler's notebook or some of the smaller planners. I just it doesn't feel comfortable for me for writing. So I knew I wanted to have the ability to use full size paper. So I had to find a bigger cover. This one's a little bit bigger than it really needed to be, but I'm enjoying it. So I have another book I'm going to be using for my creative planner. And that one's a little bit smaller. I think it's not quite 13 inches tall. So this one just has a pocket, a chenille pocket here with just some things I might want to use in my planner. This lady's just kind of tucked in there. Maybe I'll stick her down on a page at some point. And I did another video, I believe. This has been a really long, tough week. <laughs> um, I think I did a video where I talked about doing these butterflies and these this layout. I'm sorry, I like really honestly forget. So these two dividers, the back of one and the front of another one, and then all the planner pages are in the middle. And then I just have some quotes from that Pride and Prejudice book that I really like. And this little rainbow is just made out of strips of scrapbook paper that I attached there under this, this doily. Really simple. I just kind of roughed up the edges and glued them down. And they're just kind of not perfect and kind of how I like things to be. And then this divider, I think I did this in a video also. It's got a pocket on it. And we're almost to the end here. This coin envelope. Just got some ephemera. I love having little pockets and places to put extra ephemera, whether I want to use it for decorating or adding it to my planner pages or what have you. You could also, if you want to track like or keep all your receipts together, for the month, um, especially if you're using your planner to do any kind of budgeting, th the um, the 45 record sleeve and the vintage sewing pattern envelope, those are great pockets for storing receipts in because they're a little bit bigger, but you could use envelopes also in different ways in here. And that is great for storing all kinds of like little bits of paper that you need to keep track of for the month. And this takes us to the end. And then I have this 
little word sticker thing I'm going to take out also just because it's really chunking it up there and that is my whole planner <laughs> and now I am ready to use it and I'm looking forward to using that and if you have any questions like I said I've got a few other videos so some of the other videos may answer your questions but please feel free to ask me any questions about anything that you saw in this video, I'd be happy to answer them. I'll try to link up as much of the details of this planner as I can in the description box. And I'm gonna have a couple more planners. The one that I'm making for my creative ideas, I probably won't do as many videos. I may actually just make that on my own and just share the video for that, like a flip through when I'm all finished with it. I haven't even started that one but I'm just kind of playing around with some ideas. I really have to get back to making stuff for my Etsy shop and doing a few other things. So um, I'm not sure when I'll get to that. I do have my garden binder finished though. So I have a Better Homes and Gardens binder that I turned into just like a note-taking journal and a place just to do some like freeform journaling. And I have that set up. It's really, really simple. And I will probably make a video of that coming up very soon. Probably next week I'll share that. So thank you so much for being here. I would love to have you as a subscriber if you're not already. I am focusing more on doing videos, so I will have more videos coming up soon. And thank you again for joining me, and I'll catch you really soon. Take care.